Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God with Salami Energy Harina, your host. We are glad to have you today. Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. E. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary is intended to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Wednesday, the 19th day of January 2022, and our topic for today is Let There Be Light Part 3. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, the one who dwells in marvelous light, our Father, our God and our King, we thank you for how far you've helped us. We thank you for shining light into various aspects of our lives. We've come today again that you would walk upon us. We ask, Father, that whatever represents darkness in our lives today, be dispelled by your marvelous light. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 reads, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. And our scripture reading for today is from the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 to 10. 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 reads, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Today our Father and the Lord tells us in our devotional that let there be light could mean let the darkness of poverty disappear so that the pure wealth from God may appear, the type that does not bring sorrow along with it. The Almighty God is the master strategist, the architect in charge of the universe and the greatest builder of all time. Before the universe was put together, God planned it. No one is in the world by accident. He did not create man until all that he needed for his living was put in place. The earth was filled with the darkness of poverty, but God fixed it before creating man. I pray that the Almighty God will deal with the darkness of poverty in your life in Jesus' name. The Almighty God told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. The members of the redeemed Christian church of God in particular have a covenant of pure wealth with God through our Father in the Lord, the founder of the RCCG. This is why we do not need to go the worldly way to get wealth. Wealth is our trademark because we need it to carry out our mandate of world evangelization and missions. The good news is that every child of God can partake in this covenant of prosperity through faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, according to today's memory verse. In today's text, we read of a man who realized that poverty is a form of darkness and thus decided not to condone it any longer. He thus prayed against it. This man was Jabez. The lesson all children of God must learn here is that poverty is not a Christian virtue and so it should be abhorred with a passion. As a matter of fact, poverty is in direct opposition to our relationship with God, who says the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. Psalm 50 verse 10 May the light of the Almighty God shine upon you today and cause every form of darkness of poverty to forever flee in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say a resounding Amen in Jesus' name. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today still remains Let There Be Light Part 3. When we studied Let There Be Light Part 1, we understood that sin was a form of darkness. And our Father in the Lord did not only describe it as a regular form of darkness, he said it is a terrible form of darkness. 
we also learned that the cure for the darkness of sin is Jesus Christ. When we receive him as our Lord and Savior, then we can possess the pure light that only comes from God the Father of lights. Praise the Lord. Yesterday when we studied Let There Be Light Part 2, we learned that the words Let There Be Light could mean Let There Be Healing. And read in our Bible text, when the Lord Jesus healed the man sick of the palsy, he declared to the man that his sins were forgiven and the man was healed. I remember we also added an example from scripture, the story of the man by the pool of Bethesda. He had been there 38 years. Then our Lord Jesus healed him. After his healing, in an encounter with our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus told him that he had been made whole, but then he must ensure to sin no more, lest a worse thing came unto him. Today in our devotional, we learn that poverty is another form of darkness. So when God Almighty says, let there be light, it could mean let the darkness of poverty disappear. And we declare today in the name of Jesus that all shades and forms of darkness of poverty in our lives be dispelled in the name of Jesus. When the darkness of poverty disappears, what happens is that the pure wealth from God appears. Scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. The blessings of the Lord are not structured in a way to have some pain alongside with it. No, they make rich and add no sorrow to it. In our devotional today, our Father in the Lord makes us understand some very important points. He says no one is in this world by accident, and as a result, God has meticulously put plans together for our existence even before we came on board. So God is not surprised that we are here. He knows we would have needs and he has made preparations and provisions for all of this even before our arrival. How do we know this? When you read the creation story, before man was created, God had put all things in place necessary for man to survive and to thrive. This is why we know that from this day, all of our needs are divinely met in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Our Father and the Lord also reminds us in today's devotional that the members of the redeemed Christian Church of God have a covenant of pure wealth with God. In other words, we have the privilege of access to God's storehouse of abundance. We cannot be associated with lack or want. And this covenant is the more reason why we should know God would not fail in his promise. Hence, there is no need for us to become dubious just to make ends meet. God would divinely supply for us and would have abundance. One of the major reasons we must always have at the back of our minds why God would not fail in his promise according to our devotional today is because we need this wealth to carry out the mandate he has given to us, which is world evangelization and missions. This is God's heartbeat and he has entrusted the assignment to us. He has given to us the ministry of reconciliation and he will definitely fund the actualization of this assignment. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 connotes it that my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. Praise God. We learn in our devotional today of the attitude we should have towards this form of darkness called poverty. And we find this example in the story of Jabez. Our Father and the Lord says we should not condone poverty any longer. Enough of playing along with it. We must become like Jabez and refuse to take no for an answer. Poverty is not a measure of spirituality. It does not reflect the majesty and the splendor of our God. Scripture tells us that he has good plans for us. The thoughts that he thinks towards us, it says, are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. We are told in scripture that he gives us richly all things to enjoy. In Psalm 35 verse 27, scripture also tells us that he had pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. It is our prayer today that our lives would reflect the wealth and the majesty, the splendor of our God in Jesus' name. We would not live mediocre lives. We would not manage true life, enduring the darkness of poverty in Jesus' name. We'd bow our heads now and pray. We'd say, Father, whatever beautiful plans you have for my life that the enemies have distorted through the power of darkness, please restore in Jesus' name. Make this a sincere prayer point. Open your mouth and pray. Say, Father, you have good plans for me. You have beautiful plans for me. Whatever it is that the enemies may have distorted, using the powers of darkness, in the name of Jesus, we cry restore today in Jesus' name. 
Let there be multiple fold restorations. All that had been lost or stolen, let there be divine restoration. Let the beautiful plants of God begin to manifest and to blossom in our lives. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, here we are before you today. Your children appreciating you for dispelling every form of darkness in our lives. Thank you for the gift of your marvelous light. Thank you for making darkness, lack and want a thing of the past. We declare today in the name of Jesus that the last time your children knew lack would be the last time they would ever know it in the name of Jesus. We enter into new seasons of divine supply and abundance. Let the light of your divine provision shine through every corner of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. In our Bible in one year reading plan for today, read from the book of Exodus chapter 5 down to chapter 8. Hallelujah. We also want to sincerely appreciate you for coming around today. Thank you for joining us. We are really glad to have you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Be reminded also that you can bless someone today when you share this with them. Go forth today and enjoy divine prosperity and provisions in Jesus' name. Have a great day. See you tomorrow again and bye for now. Enjoy today's devotional. We'd love to hear from you. Kindly leave a comment. You can connect with us on any of our social media handles attached. God bless you. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.